So one of the things we're seeing is, uh, you know, a lot, of the, a lot of the people we have on stage are talking a lot about power density, talking a lot about pace of innovation. We think that, um, you know, we think that these are obviously very important uh, things to the data center of the future. Uh, our next guest up here is going to talk specifically about that data center of the future. Another company that was a founding member of the OCP project. Um, they've been great stewards. Uh, chances are if you're running any sort of data center or you've got any uh, uh, x86 infrastructure out there, uh, you've got some of their technology in your data center. Uh, please help me welcome Eric Cooper with Intel, who is the Director of Cloud Service Provider Optimization. Good afternoon. As Cole said, I'm Eric Cooper. I'm the Director of Cloud Service Provider Optimization at Intel, and I also manage our rack scale architecture project. And I'd like to spend a few minutes talking about the projects we have underway to develop the components and technologies that we believe are going to be the heart of the data center of the future. And also talk about some of the projects we have underway to work with the OCP community to deliver the servers and storage systems and networking equipment and interconnect products that we think bring this vision to reality. I think uh, Jason Waxman talked earlier this morning about how Intel looks at the way we invest in OCP and the way we've invested for years in OCP in terms of delivering contributions that are either Intel's or working with community members to deliver their contributions and supporting that activity, but also working to development of the next generation technologies and then working to drive adoption uh, across the OCP community. And what we'll do over the next few minutes is talk about why we're so excited about Intel rack scale architecture and as our focus for our development activities. And then I'll invite one of our partners on stage to share his journey and their journey on their OCP adoption. Uh, but let's, let's begin with the end in mind. Where do we see the needs of scale out infrastructure, whether it's for public or private cloud, evolving? Where, where, where is it going? And, and we think there's a, a sort of a strong voice from the community that we need scalable, flexible, efficient infrastructure that supports resource pools that, that deliver the services that are, that are uniquely demanded by the wide range of workloads. And Frank mentioned earlier today the disaggregated rack concept, and we've been talking for a couple of years at OCP about the disaggregated rack. And let's, let's think of that as, as, a, as a path to this end state where you have right now a bunch of resources locked into server systems or storage systems or network equipment. And we need to break that apart, disaggregate that, and then re-aggregate that into different architecture, much larger scale, with the flexibility to address the, the emerging needs. And as we, as we look at that, Intel thinks of this as working with, the, working with the industry to define the logical architecture that can bring that vision to fruition and then working with the, part, the ecosystem partners to deliver the products based on the components and technologies we can, we can develop to the, a bunch of physical implementations, physical instantiations of these technologies. And, and you can think of OCP compliance solutions or some of the stuff that, that Microsoft's working on in, in, a, in a, different, yet a, a different physical implementation, but yet founded on the same logical architecture that includes pooled systems and and pod large scale storage solutions and pod wide fabric and pod management solutions to, to orchestrate and, and control all of the infrastructure. So we've seen some emerging and heard some emerging needs in that, for example, in, in the compute space, we know that there's such a wide range of, of workloads that there's a need for a wide range of compute nodes, every, everywhere from the Intel Atom based compute nodes all the way up to the Intel Xeon high-end uh, compute nodes that, that can be optimized and tuned for each individual, each, each individual end user's workloads and, and maximize the work done per TCO dollar. We know that there's uh, emerging needs for, for standards-based network equipment that, that can be deployed in a wide range of topologies with increasing bandwidth and, and decreasing latencies. We know that the workloads demand uh, new storage and memory models of, of pooled and, and shared, shared resources that, that meet the needs of these workloads. And we know that there's, there's a need to manage this infrastructure seamlessly with the right telemetry 
and, and controls exposed from the infrastructure to provide this flexible, this, this flexible service. And so that's the end state, and, and, the, and the question is, what are we doing and, and how do we help the industry progress along towards that end state? And let's focus on four, four sets of projects that are in flight now and that you can actually see in, in, uh, our, in our booth in the functional rack scale architecture demonstration. Uh, that includes boards, interconnect, networking, and storage. I'm going to talk in a few minutes in some detail about the boards and the interconnect, but I wanted to highlight a little bit on, on networking and, and storage first. So on the, on the storage side, we're working with a number of industry partners to deliver the standard JBOD systems and, and the emerging cold storage systems that are either in deployment now or will be coming, as, as uh, Matt Cordry talked about earlier, and will be coming to the community in the future. On the networking side, we've, we've worked with the community to, to develop a 10 gig, 40 gig bare metal uh, top of rack switch specification that uh, the, with community input defined how we can see some, some lower cost, simpler network hardware emerge. And then we've worked with some OEMs to develop based on the open network platform reference architecture we have and the, uh, the specification to deliver some compliant products for, to, the, to that uh, specification. So those are available now, and you can see some of those in, in the booth. But as we, as we look at what's going on in the board space, uh, we've been, we're, we're now working on our third generation of, of boards with the OCP community. And I want to talk about what exists now and, and talk a little bit about where this is headed and, and why. But you, you've, you've heard of the decathlete spec and, and, the, and the windmill spec. These are these have already been released. Intel worked with the community to define a general purpose board specification with a large memory footprint and OCP compliant manageability and, 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 the, and, and the form factor that works in a standard 19 inch rack. Um, that specification was re released a while ago and we've, we've worked with the community to develop compliant boards. Uh, just like Windmill was released by Facebook to define their denser smaller feature set, you know, purpose-built uh, motherboard. And with those specifications in place, then the OCP Compliance and Interoperability Work Group defined as Cole and Frank uh, explained earlier the inch-wide, mile-deep certification requirements for these, for these compliance, the, the compliance of these specifications. And, and over the past year, we've worked closely with the uh, eTree organization in Taiwan and and the University of Texas at San Antonio to execute that compliance testing. And now for the first time, we have some OCP certified products that are available on the market. So that's what's new in the last year in the, in the existing boards. As we look forward, we're working closely with the community on developing a, an Intel Atom C2000 based uh, compute module or, or module that's compliant with the OCP uh, SOC module specification, and uh, this is the, the type of, Matt talked about this earlier today, it's, it's the module that can be used both in storage solutions and in compute solutions, and I wanted to show an early sample of that here. Uh, this has got the, the Intel Atom-based CPU on it, so you can see, you can imagine this in a, in a very dense array of cartridges, and you can imagine this in what Matt talked about with a, a uh, you know, a storage cold storage box as the head node. The other thing that we're working closely with Facebook on right now is their next generation, I'm going to put that down for a second, their next generation uh, compute module. And this is, this is based on Intel's next generation Xeon platform. And it's, we're proud to show for the first time publicly today a functional version of this over in our booth. And so it's very, you can see it's very similar to previous generations, and as, as uh, Matt talked about, they continue to iterate on improvements, and, and those are all baked into this. And so that'll be another specification that's coming, another specification with some product implementations that are coming to market soon. But if you step back and look at what we have in this board uh, effort is, is a growing portfolio with, with a breadth of solutions that can meet that that breadth of needs that I talked about earlier in this, in this vision. And so by the end of the year, we'll have a handful of, of boards added to this ecosystem, this, this portfolio, 
that will be available in the ecosystem to meet the needs uh, of not just Facebook, not just Rackspace, but a full set of OCP community members. The uh, other thing we did at last year's OCP summit is we showed some early samples of the silicon photonics cables and connectors. And we talked about what the technology is capable of, and we released a design guide that described how you might incorporate optics into rack designs. In the past year, we've made lots of progress now. We've, we've completed the design with Corning on the MXC connector. It's the, the low-cost, multi-fiber connector that, that, is, uh, that is built specifically for data center reliability, so you can scale this out across a wide range, you know, across the, 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 the massive data center scales with confidence in the reliability. And we've delivered functional samples, pre-production samples, to a number of customers. And you've, you, you've probably seen some OEMs have publicly demonstrated functionality up to 100 gigabits per second links. And, and we've talked about the capability of this technology growing, too. As you can imagine, Corning working on a, a cable with 64 fibers in it that at 25 gigabits per second will lead to 1.6 terabit per second bandwidths across 300 meters. And so, again, stepping back and looking at this, you can say, there, here's a technology that spans everything from inter-rack to intra-rack the, the needs of optical interconnect on a, on a, with a common set of, of technologies. So we're really excited about this. This is another uh, part of the demo in, in our booth that you can see some, some functional versions of this running in two different network topologies. What I want to do next is uh, change gears, focus on a, the adoption vector a little bit. Um, we've been working with a number of partners, just like everyone, in, on both the supply side as well as the end user side. And I want to introduce Grant Richard uh, from Rackspace. He's been, uh, many of you know him, he's been a, a, an advocate for OCP from the very beginning in both work groups, but also with uh, his, his efforts at Goldman Sachs. And he's going to share his journey on Goldman Sachs' adoption. Thank you, Chris. Um, hello, everybody. I'm Grant Rich from Goldman Sachs. Um, one of the things that's interesting about OCP and, and adoption of OCP is, is about where, the journey and where you start. And so, you know, we heard actually some really interesting uh, slides and foils from the, the Rackspace folks. And it was interesting because uh, when they got to one of their slides, it's almost identical to my last slide. So, so we all must be thinking uh, alike, but unlike you know, many of the other uh, firms that are uh, adopting OCP hardware, we have a 150-year-old concern and with, a, with an existing infrastructure, and I just wanted to sort of talk a little about how, where the journey begins towards OCP. So the first thing is we have 68 different data centers, and th some of these are designed by us, some of these are designed by others, some of these are a rack full of equipment, some of these are a six or seven megawatt data center. Um, in those data centers, we have 34 megawatts of capacity, which we could possibly use. Uh, as well, we have uh, 10,000 network devices, half a million compute cores, and 28 petabytes of storage. So when they mentioned the, um, uh, earlier about the storage servers, and they said they had about 30 petabytes in one of those uh, initial uh, cold storages, that's about what we have now. Now, the interesting part about the environment and, and, and our environment is, is we have quite an elaborate um, uh, you know, IT department. We have about 8,000 people who are doing technology or technology-related uh, activities. These range from things like cybersecurity people to operating system engineers to system integrators to system uh, operators, developers, infrastructure, tool groups. Um, a really interesting array of folks. As well, uh, within, those fo within that uh, group of folks, we also support things like um, efforts not only OCP, but ONF and Java, which are the ones that come to mind immediately. Um, as far as actual physical servers, we have about 120,000 of the physical servers and um, about 59,000 individual databases. Now, the other thing before I move off here is our, is our journey is we have about 1.2 billion lines of code. Okay, this is a, a fairly substantial code tree. Some of this code is older than I am, okay, and I, since I was 29 yesterday. Uh, you know, uh, it, it hasn't been around that much. 
so, but anyway, it's a lot of code. We have uh, you know, code that we need to move into, the, into this environment. So this is kind of where we start. So the journey is not always as easy as if we were uh, starting a, a cleaner business. We have a myriad of operating systems as well. So looking at sort of our partnership with OCP, uh, we were at, um, and, and you know, we, we had known Frank for some time. We were at the initial uh, OCP uh, launch. Um, it's, it, it's actually miraculous to see how big we've grown in, in you know, three plus years. It started in the cafeteria of Facebook. Um, you know, when, when the foundation became formed, uh, we, we started on the board. Um, Don Duet, who unfortunately couldn't be here today or he would be delivering this presentation, um, uh, you know, is, is a member of the board and we've been tremendously supportive. Um, one of the things that we felt, we saw everything was about hardware, but nothing was about the management part. And the management part, we think, is actually quite critical. And at least initially, um, we chaired uh, from a Goldman person, me, uh, chaired the hardware uh, management track. As well, uh, you know, we've continued to do that, and we think that's pretty important. One of the other things that happened a little bit after that was we started to, to notice that because we have such a large environment, and, it, and, it's, and it's not... Um, it's not, it's not growing and it's sort of staying in legacy data centers, that we needed some, some bridge between the current OCP and the highly optimized OCP and the things that we have now. And that's when we began to engage our partners, like Intel, to come up with a 19-inch form factor. And we sat with uh, Bill Carter, I think was the, was the last person we worked with on this, and he was terrific, and we went through the, the whole process with him, and we'll talk about that a little bit more, but I think this was an important partnership and speaks to the kind of things that the, the folks from Rackspace were talking about. The level of engagement that we have with other vendors is actually critical to the success, and Intel's been, been a really good partner. Um, the other part was we've also felt that the certification, you know, we needed a brand. And, and uh, you know, I think this was not only us, but a number of folks. So we also worked uh, with the foundation to set up the CNI track. And hopefully, uh, someone will be on the stage next year. Hopefully, it'll be Don. Um, and he'll come and he'll show you pictures of these OCP servers in our, in our legacy data centers in a fairly large footprint. So looking at, you know, engaging it. So what we said was we needed sort of a 19-inch motherboard that uh, can, can run a variety of workloads. So first of all, we have an enormous amount of remote desktops. Uh, Goldman Sachs, uh, everybody, and probably there's probably one or two people in the mailroom who aren't this way, but almost everybody has a, is running on a backrack server. Okay, so our servers, all of our desktops are running in, in the data centers. It makes life so much easier. Working from home is easy. Any kind of disaster recovery, bad weather, which, by the way, we're in New Jersey, so you've heard about our weather from the Super Bowl reports, um, makes, makes it extremely easy. Uh, risk calculations, we run a fairly large risk and pricing environment. Uh, you've heard about our storage and our cloud. We're building a large internal cloud. And what we need, wanted to do is have a platform that could service all of these. Uh, the original sort of code name for the, pro the, the project was Swiss Army Knife, which is obviously copyrighted, so it, it couldn't go to market with that. And so the Intel folks uh, renamed it uh, Decathlete. Now, as far as the Goldman Sachs engineering, we worked with our partners, and in the case of the Decathlete board, this was primarily Intel, uh, we worked with Bill Carter on the specifications. Uh, we went through the calls, we scrubbed the specs, we used our, you know, our, our hardware engineering folks, our um, virtualization engineering, our Linux engineering folks to, to test out the motherboard. We you know, reviewed the specs, and of course we tested the BIOS and other firmware because unlike, <coughs> pardon me, uh, unlike many um, other places where you're running one or two versions of OSs, we have a fairly large OS coverage, and it's really important for us to understand what can run on it. So this was kind of our engagement. So, so we were actually sitting down with the engineers, reviewing specs, re reviewing things with them. And it was just a tremendous partnership. The last part, which is the slide that you, you've seen already, which was this is the, the Rackspace slide. Um, one thing that we've noticed here really is supply chain. And you know, Rackspace is, is sort of growing at a, a, fairly, a, a larger rate than we are at this point. And what we noticed that even though we tested everything, one of the challenges that, is, that we had was really the supply chain. How do we order things? How do we 
bring them in? How do we do less sort of legal contracts for liability? I mean, when you bring a server in, there's some expectations. And, you know, typically in, in the old style legacy market, all of that was hidden from, from us. So as customers, we had integrators, and we used the term loosely. It was anybody who supplied us with a complete unit. So this was either you know, the, the classic you know, large uh, computer manufacturers and the integrators, and then behind them were the manufacturers. So there was a tremendous amount of things hidden from us, uh, both good and bad. The model today is that really we look at the manufacturers, so the, the component manufacturers, the people who are actually putting those together for us, as well as us, the customer, and that's really a tight partnership. And I think the partnership is really going to pay off. So anyway, uh, I wanted to thank everybody for their time and um, just say this is a very cool event. I'm delighted to see as many people here, um, you know, this, and I'll, I'll turn it over. Thanks, Grant. So just in, in uh, conclusion, Intel's been participating in OCP since the, since the beginning, and we're excited to continue to invest in, in both contributions, the development of the next generation technologies, and the adoption as, as, this, as this flywheel, as, as Frank called it, gets going. And, and I'd invite you to stop by not just our booth, but you know, Kurt talked about the HP booth and the, 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 see some of the Dell technologies, see some of the Quanta, WeWin product op options and new technologies, and, and of course stop by the Intel booth to see where we're headed with the future technology in the Intel rack scale architecture. Thank you.